Anyway, so here is the uh, here I am back again. Uh, my name is Darius. So I'm, I'm gonna talk about uh, the uh, Gamos of the Week, which is next uh, topic today. And uh, for today, I prepared a few games uh, from the uh, Opera Rapid from the Champions Chess Tour that you know happened over the course of the last few days. And uh, I think that you know, in general, in those online tournaments, there are lots of let's say interesting games being played, um, and um, especially with uh, I don't know with such players like, for instance, Daniel Dubov, who, who are you know very very uh, creative and uh, with great preparation and um, huge resourcefulness, the games are even more interesting. Uh, so indeed, yep, I prepared some uh, two of his games actually. Um, not sure if we could cover like, one in too big of a detail because all of them uh, prepared are pretty interesting. Um, they are short, but none of that, nonetheless, uh, lots of things happen in them. So the first one I prepared for today is uh, Daniel Dubov versus uh, Ding Liren. The game that lasted like uh, just up just to oh, oh sorry, didn't mean to click that. Uh, only 18 moves. Daniel Dubov managed to uh, beat, uh, to win uh, against uh, <coughs> against a Chinese uh, number one player uh, in only 18 moves, which is uh, pretty much unique. Uh, I don't know, <laughs> unique uh, I don't know, situation, because. Uh, also, Ding Liren is known for his very solid style and uh, to beating him in 18 moves. No matter the time control, it's, it's a, I guess, a huge achievement. And uh, especially for spectators, uh, it's it's a very uh, fun to watch, you know, such decisive games. Okay, so what happened? D4, Knight F6, Knight F3, D5, C4, E6, G3, Daniel Lubos won out for his uh, uh, Catalan. And here he employed one of the um, newest ideas in Catalan, bishop b4, knight bd2. Uh, this move, uh, of course, not a novelty, it's one of the, let's say, three possible lines here. Uh, I always consider this move as slightly uh, inferior to relative to fifth, five bishop d2, we, and personally, I've only played myself bishop d2 in this position. Uh, however, knight d2 leads to a very sharp, very, very, often leads to very sharp positions, which are pretty much uh, in, du in Dubov's style, <laughs> I, I would say. And uh, especially, you know, with good preparation, you can catch uh, your opponent there. So uh, definitely there's uh, some, you, lots of room to explore, um, lots of possibilities here for white uh, to look for an advantage, or at least some practical chances. So uh, knight bd2, d takes c4, uh, bishop g2. And now, um, as far as I know, the main move here uh, is b5, <coughs> and uh, I think b5 is uh, comfortably equalizing as far as I know. Um, I would be really curious what uh, Daniel Lubov prepared against b5. Uh, there are some crazy lines, like um, I remember Alex Ipatov once played uh, after a4, c6, short castle, short castle move like knight e1 or something like this. Sometimes he played also uh, CB, CB, Knight, G5 or something like this. Uh, stuff like that he played, I, I know. And uh, after Knight, D5, E4, if I'm not mistaken. And these positions are extremely, extremely sharp. And um, perhaps, I would say, uh, Daniel Lua was looking for some ideas here. Uh, but, of course, it's only uh, my uh, guess. Um, I don't know, it uh, will be interesting definitely to see what he had in mind after move b5, which I think is the uh, best move here. In on, uh, the English Ren play move a5, which is, I guess, also impossible. Uh, a3, bishop takes d2, bishop takes d2, uh, short castle, and uh, queen c2. But with this move order, we actually transpose to different position, uh, which is um, well known to be quite dangerous for black, in my opinion. Because uh, if black plays not uh, after bishop g2, I will come back here for a second. If black plays not b5 or a5, but let's say short castle, then queen c2, a5 is actually a line. And right now, right now, a3, bishop takes d2, bishop takes d2, b5 is a modern concept of how to approach this position, a4, c6. And this is exactly what happened later in the game, but from different move order. So in the, in the game followed, uh, coming back from this initial position, a5, a3, bishop takes d2, bishop takes d2, 
short castle, queen c2, b5, normal logical to defend this uh, c4 pawn, a4 and c6. In this position, uh, I analyzed it, I remember in 2017, I think, uh, or 18, 17 or 18, I don't remember, so one of those years. And I remember that, I think, uh, I, I think 17 still, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, what uh, I analyzed here is that uh, I thought that this position is pretty much, uh, you know, totally okay for, bla for, for black. And uh, my key idea here was that, of course, uh, if the most logical move, the only move I considered back in the day was move e4. And uh, the, my uh, refutation of this idea, of course, if black white gets to play move e5, for example, let's say some random like bishop b7, then e5, my g5 would be extremely dangerous because, first of all, this knight comes towards the king side and, uh, you know, there's uh, queen h7 made in one threat. So, and if g6, then uh, all the dark squares are weak around the white king, uh, sorry, black king. So knight e4 would be, for instance, very, very unpleasant to meet as well. <coughs> Uh, of course, there are possibly other poss possibilities, but uh, uh, this looks very, very annoying uh, to black. That's why I, uh, this was this, this, this is the only move I analyzed back in the day. But here, uh, black can play move e5, and this was the game of Tomaszewski versus Ding Liren. Uh, black returns the pawn um, in order to stabilize position in the center and obtain some squares for, for the knights. And the game, uh, I, if I remember correctly, the, uh, this game was pretty much solving this line in my analysis. So in the, let's just see what happens. It takes e5, knight d7, bishop e3, because right now knight c5 could be an idea. Knight c5, knight d3 could be an idea. So bishop e3 is logical, but uh, right now we renew this idea of knight a6. And also when playing with knight b4. So uh, that's why I thought that this is a very clean way of you know, solving this uh, problem, solving, you know, or equalizing this in this, in this line. Short castle, let's say knight c5, knight, uh, okay, knight d3, not, not now, uh, but uh, soonish, uh, rook b8. Of course, the position is still very, very complicated, and I'm not saying that this is uh, absolutely, you know, um, okay for black, but uh, according to my analysis, this was, you know, pretty decent, and here, um, actually, he didn't play never knight d3, but, you know, because of the game, of the course of the game, but uh, he just caught a perpetual here with uh, knight a2 and queen c3. Knight before queen, uh, sorry, knight a knight before queen c3, knight a2, queen c2. <coughs> and uh, yeah, so I thought that this is basically the refutation of this line, or like you know, another refutation solution to this to this line, uh, c6. And I wanted to play this with black, but then modern theory basically uh, lc0, alpha0, and everything just uh, developed new, completely new paths, which all in which have common denominator, which is basically playing without castle and uh, immediately uh, uh, rushing to <laughs> to basically checkmate the opponent uh, with some attack. So, uh, and those attacks involve moves like h4. And this is exactly what happened in this game. And um, this is not a novelty. There have been a few games already like this, but uh, white score already, I think, 90% in this, uh, like, uh, in, this, uh, in this line. I think only one, there was one draw, uh, I don't who play with white, I don't remember, but with black played uh, um, Wei Yi, uh, and he played with knight a6, I think, but which is also kind of like weird because knight e5 becomes really, really annoying on this diagonal and pawn c6 is hanging, and uh, you know, position is suddenly, I think, it's nearly lost for black. So this is also, also wrong. So um, after h4, um, what, in general, let's ask ourselves, what's happening? Why h4? What's the idea of h4? Um, because, you know, there, is there really such a dangerous attack on the king side? Or what's going on? Like, is it really so bad? Um, I would say yes. Uh, it's become, maybe, maybe not bad, but I would say it's definitely dangerous for black. Why? Because there is no dark square bishop. And uh, with, without dark square bishop, all the dark squares are weak. And also, uh, potentially, the king will be weak uh, on the on the king side without the dark, dark square bishop. And uh, this idea of h4, basically, usually, I'll just, just give a perspective, usually white goes for some stuff like, let's say, b3 or something like c, b, queen takes b3, you know, b4, let's say maybe rook c1 or rook a, d1, uh, rook fd1, rook a, c1, you know, typical Catalan compensation. This is possible, but... Um, Oh, sorry, I, I 
I didn't mean to click that. <laughs> um, this is, uh, you know, uh, let's say typical what uh, black usually goes for here. Um, however, um, sorry, white goes for here. Uh, but but uh, this is kind of like slow. This approach of castle, uh, you know, bishop b7, b3, and so on is kind of slow. We are not creating any danger towards black king, and we try to play position on the queen side, <coughs> which uh, is um, less optimal, I would say. Not, I mean, it's not, simply op not optimal. h4 is a modern approach, which mainly creates some press towards, uh, against black king. Um, Knight d7 uh, happened in the game, and this knight d7 move apart is actually seem okay. It's logical, right? Isn't it? Uh, but what can I say? It's nearly losing, Pre pretty much, pretty much nearly losing move. <coughs> and um, after move uh, knight d7, the point is that suddenly there are some certain problems on this diagonal. And uh, what, what should have been played here is move bishop b7 to make sure that this diagonal is well covered and pawn c the c6 pawn is uh, well defended as well. After bishop b7, let's say h5, h6, analyze um, here. And right now, uh, this is what in general what black should do here. So I try to analyze it a little bit and I want to share my analysis with you. Uh, what should white do here? And um, you know, castling, you know, short, uh, castle king side pretty much makes absolutely no sense because we already played h4, h5, so we kind of declare there's something we want to do on the king side. Uh, so castling short, uh, castling king side makes no sense. Playing b3 also makes no sense. So the only way pretty much uh, to continue here is to somehow create an attack on the king side. And the way to do it is very, very straightforward, g4. Uh, the only way pretty much to continue, let's say, the, the initiative here. And I'm not saying that this is uh, winning or something. Perhaps black can, you know, equalize uh, with correct play, but position becomes extremely dangerous. Analyze here, knight g4 and simply rook g1. And it doesn't matter that we sacrifice another pawn and uh, the, our king is, our king, our own king is in the center. We open the king side to immediately create a threat against black king. We do not care about our king uh, in the center, actually our king in the center is very very safe, so it makes no sense uh, to castle it uh, to you know, queen side or king side, it's f perfectly sound and safe on the kings uh, in the center and instead we just focus on developing the attack on the, in the, um, on the king side. So analyze f5, bishop h3, that's the entire idea to basically change the knight on g4, open g file and go for some mating attack. And uh, in general in such situations, whenever well, because white side, uh, white uh, is pretty much uh, create uh, attacking on the king side, right? So in white's one side uh, attacks on the side of the board, uh, the defending side should generally not try to defend on the same side of the board. Instead, the other defending side should open the center in order to uh, look for counterplay rather than passively defending. And that's exactly this very nice example of this, uh, say, principle of like a rule of thumb or whatever to play move here c5 and uh, the position becomes extremely complicated and crazy uh, but this is pretty i think pretty much uh, way to go here with with black uh let's say bishop takes g4 bishop e4 actually there have been one game like this it was prohaska uh, versus gavrilescu and um in 2019 i believe 2020 maybe huh? 2019 uh and um in this game, uh, Per Prohaska won, however, uh, I'll, okay, I'll show you in a second what could have happened. After queen c3, uh, queen has to be defended obviously, f takes g4. Uh, so uh, right now, uh, black has uh, black has some choice, whether, um, you know, to play, um, I don't know, take on c5, maybe take on b5, um, I don't know, take on g4, right? Maybe take on b5 is not a good idea. But let's say take on c5 and take on g4 are two, let's say, main moves. So uh, let's see what happens after d takes c5. If they did, this is in, okay, actually, let's say what happens after rook takes g4. After rook takes g4, suddenly black is lost, uh, sorry, black, white is lost. 
and uh, in the this will happen in the game uh, Prohaska Gavrilescu, and but here Gavrilescu plays with Bishop takes a three, which is a big mistake, and uh, after he takes a three, position becomes extremely unclear, and both sides have his own chances, and eventually uh, Prohaska won. Uh, how? Oops, didn't mean to click that again. Uh, however, in this position, after Rook takes g4, Rook takes f3. Uh, Black Rook has played, and after he takes f3, he takes d4. White is totally lost. White is totally lost. There is uh, such a huge, powerful center. Uh, bishop will retreat. Uh, Queen's under attack has to retreat. Bishop will re to retreat to f5 the next move. Rook will have to retreat. Uh, Black King is safe. White King is in the center. Black is simply totally winning. Uh, totally, totally winning. Um, that's why rook takes g4 would be a, was a huge mistake in this game. Um, however, d takes c5 would, was probably better. Uh, bishop takes a free, uh, has to be probably played. And the game, the game, the position is totally insane. What can I say? It's totally insane position. And again, such in, even though black holds probably the best moves, I analyze, I, I analyze it pretty deeply. I don't want to go into detail here, but I analyze it pretty deeply. And everywhere, pretty much black, I think, holds. I could have missed something, I'm not saying. But um, but in general, black holds. But position is with such tiny room for error, margin for error, that uh, without prior preparation to play the like this with black is extremely, extremely dangerous. And this is where the you know preparation uh, with the modern engines comes into play. Uh, that's why uh, all the top players very strong as uh, you know and very like for instance like Dubov who is very creative and um, has lots of let's say ideas uh, you know that's why um, you know th I mean that's how they work that's that's how the world that's how they search uh, I also did myself in my own preparation uh, look for ideas that basically create a lot of practical problems to the opponent because finding you know reason in such position is extremely difficult rather than the same let's say in some Petrov or Berlin, right? In this position, there is lots of going on and uh, there is this very, very fighting position. If you are a uh, prior preparation, you can catch even Grandmaster like, uh, like Ding Liren here. Because what Ding Liren did, uh, he played after h4, 97, he immediately made the mistake. After h5, h6, uh, suddenly position is just lost, uh, g4. Again, we just go for the same strategy, same, same idea of g4. And the position is just suddenly not defendable for for black. If you if white black just plays some let's say bishop b7 or something, the g5 follows obviously. H takes g5 and right now even h6 could be considered. Bishop takes g5 can be considered. Knight takes g5 can be considered. Everything is you know I'll just put it on the board. Bishop takes g5 is interesting. H6 looks very tempting as well. Knight g5 is possible as well. Um, there it's difficult to I mean difficult to play here. With uh, with uh, uh, with black, um, possibly this position is just nearly nearly lost. Uh, however, uh, one more. Uh, I just well, just recalled one thing here. Uh, I wanted to show. Uh, let me just show my get my analysis back. Uh, yeah, uh, okay, ninety seven, h five, h six, and g four, right? So. Uh, he took right now. Ding Ren takes plays and takes g4, but right now uh, there are certain issues because suddenly it takes b5, and uh, c takes b5 uh, will run into knight h2 uh, or even knight g5, and there are some certain issues on this diagonal. After this, let's say knight g5 is interesting, also knight h2 is possible. White simply wins material, there's no way around it. Uh, white wins material and move number what 15. <laughs> Uh, so this means uh, this shows what kind of you know what kind of importance pre uh, preparation has on grandmaster level, um, and also where was grandmasters top grandmasters search uh, for ideas and look for ideas because um, it's easy to let's say search in let's say some Berlin or something you get some equal position which is playable but also maybe we can get equal position with something which is something like this. In, in which position is much harder to play? Of course, something like this, rather than Berlin, for instance. Uh, so, um, yeah. So, in the game for bishop b7, and right now, knight h2 again. Suddenly, uh, the game is just over. 
uh, out of nowhere the game is just over it kind of rhymes but the game is just pretty much over because b takes c6 is a threat knight takes g4 is a threat you cannot defend from both uh, knight takes f2 following the game because if okay knight takes h2 then we just play b takes c6 bishop takes six takes knight g4 and we can just win the exchange followed by rook g1 and uh, yeah the game is just over on g4 is hanging on f5 is hanging Okay, not on g4, not yet because queen h1 mate, uh, but okay, at some point we'll be hanging on g4, rook a5 is still a threat, white is totally winning, or just extra exchange, white is totally winning here. Um, Alright, so uh, in the game followed knight takes f2, which is pretty much desperation here, king takes f2, queen h4 check, just king f1, queen f6, just bishop f3, and uh, yeah, and here Dingli ran simply uh, resigned. And uh, very interesting and very instructive stuff from, let's say, theoretical perspective, but also not only from theoretical perspective, but also from, let's say, psychological perspective. How to, let's say, approach opponent preparation to catch psychologically your opponent into position that he or she may not like. And uh, here, very nice preparation here by Daniel Dubov, uh, who just uh, nicely outplayed I mean just crushed his opponent because um, Dingren presumably did not know or did not remember how to uh, correctly react here uh, one more thing I wanted to show about this line bishop b7 uh, how dangerous it is even here after h5 h6 g4 then g4 rook g1 right so uh, this in this position uh, let's say if black doesn't want to play for f5 let's say black wants to play move like king h8 King h8 with the idea of you know trying to get out of this h file and uh, try to in, uh, sorry g file and uh, you know try to make king save without you know weakening this pawn structure here with move f5 without this move. So right now uh, I think white, white has very strong attack after knight e5, and uh, the point is that if knight takes e5, d takes e5, uh, you know these pieces are not easily coming to the game. Uh, I will develop some. There it's simply dangerous to play this position with. Uh, with black, I can uh, I can double on the g file maybe somehow maybe rook a3 rook g3 or something like this. Maybe I can you know bring my queen let's say to the king side as well. Ideas of queen c1 bishop h6 are always in the air or bishop g6 immediately bishop bishop h6 immediately. I mean, um, all of it is there. And it's very very dangerous position to play. And if queen h4 trying to you know to maybe look for counterplay or uh, you know um, at least. Uh, activate the queen, uh, knight takes g4, queen takes g4, and right now uh, white uh, has huge, probably just winning position, uh, huge, advantage, huge advantage, or at least, at least, or probably just the winning position after move rook a3, which is a very, very nice and elegant move. Uh, rook comes to the play from the third rank to g3, and the game is just uh, suddenly nearly, nearly decided. Because with such attack uh, against Black King, there is nothing. I don't think that there is nothing Black uh, Black can do here. Uh, so uh, yeah, this is uh, very interesting uh, stuff, very interesting uh, preparation and and in general line in Catalan um, for White. And uh, personally, I, I may study it more myself because it, it definitely in such a game is is, is, is inspirational. Um, all right, so this is the first game I want to discuss. Uh, short one, and but I just want to give general picture of the theory here, uh, you know how developed, uh, how developed, how the psychology, how, how the psychology works, and um, I think this was a very interesting game. Uh, next game I want to talk about is game uh, also versus Ding Liren, but this time with white played Maxim Vashela Graf, and uh, in this game. Uh, <coughs> Uh, followed uh, th in this game, I mean, uh, Vashela Graf, Maxim Vashela Graf played uh, with White against his own opening, which is uh, which is Sicilian Nidor. Um, in the game followed e4, c5. By the way, uh, Dingleren, I played myself against Dingleren, and he played against me e5, e4, e5. Uh, here, I guess he decided to uh, widen his. Uh, opening repertoire and began playing Sicilian Knight of as well, which is not super really surprising because uh, I know that he played also Karakan in the past, he played uh, some Taimanov, Sicilian Taimanov as well. Uh, so, uh, you know, in every Grandmaster, 
every grandmaster tries to you know look for new openings, new look for new uh, positions to play, searching new ideas and so on. Sometimes it backfires, like in this time, uh, it backfired against maybe you know Ding Liren. Uh, however, you know uh, that's the general trend. People, need, people, players need to play pretty much or be ready at least to play every position, uh, which means the style has to be pretty much universal. So, okay, coming back to the game, e4, c5, knight f3, d6, d4, takes, takes, knight f6, knight c3, a6. So, uh, <laughs> right now, uh, the, of course, the knight, knight of the uh, millions and, like, you know, possibilities for white here. Um, lots of ideas for, you know, with, with both, uh, I mean, like, uh, more position of, of the, both styles, like, more positional and more aggressive. Um, for instance, one of the heaviest analyzed, heavy, the, the most heaviest uh, or like the most analyzed lines here is bishop e3 and uh, bishop g5. Those two are, I think, the by far the most. Also, h3 is very interesting. All of them uh, are, um, you know, playable. Also, bishop d3 recently gained some popularity, which I myself employed in some of my games. Uh, there are also moves like a3, which Magnus Carlsen played, I think, in this tournament. Um, f4, there is f3, there's bishop c4, which uh, Levon Arena tried against Ding Liren as well, I think. Uh, lots of possibilities for uh, for white. However, uh, MVL decided to play move rook g1, which is a r somewhat rare, but recently also in here the, the theory developed quite substantially. Um, I think one of the you know pioneers of this line, let's say modern modern times, let's say over the last let's say couple of maybe year or two, uh, was Yanni Pomnoschik who played several times, uh, and I and yeah, and the idea of Rook G1 is to play move G4 and G5. Of course, this I'm not saying he's not a pioneer. This move, exists, this move existed let's say you know many many years ago already, but he kind of like revived it I think, because I don't recall it being so popular before those before his games. Anyway, uh, rook g1, uh, idea is to play g4, g5, and uh, basically uh, it is very similar to line with h3. Uh, after uh, The thing is that after h3, uh, we uh, are wasting a sort of a tempo for, you know, to play g4 and then g5 and h4, right? So we play h3 first, then play h4. So idea of rook g1 is not to uh, waste time for his h3 and then play and uh, g4, g5, then h4, h5, very immediately have rook on g1, which is usually useful. And uh, to mm, create, you know, some attack on the on the king side. So uh, rook g1 uh, has uh, was played, and uh, here I always thought maybe some probably theory changed or something. There was some new stuff, no, but I think the safest in general, no matter what the theory suggests, I think is to e5, knight b3, and move like bishop b6, followed by d5. In general, black should be okay here. However, I will not uh, guarantee that this is equalizing 100% for sure white still has some ideas there as well uh, the point is uh, but in general what the main idea here from black's perspective if black can get to d5 and make this kind of like freeing uh, breakthrough in the center uh, white will not be able to you know cause too much threat say even such end games after takes takes knight takes d5 queen takes d5 are very close to equality maybe white is slightly better in those end games but they are very very close to equality um, the point is that if we do not play knight d5, let's say we play bishop e7, g5, knight d7, uh, this becomes kind of annoying for to play with uh, with black because white immediately gains uh, some space on the queen side, sorry, king side, uh, didn't waste time for move h3 here, which is extremely big achievement, and uh, didn't also waste time to play f3. So white can play move f4, for instance, here in this position, or maybe play prepare with bishop e3 and then queen d2 or something like that, and then f4. Uh, again, many possibilities for white, and uh, in general, something like this black should avoid. Uh, that's why I personally I think d5 is I think the simplest, uh, or maybe even if it's slightly worse here for black in this end game, it should be definitely holdable. Um, however, is the not the most entertaining way to play, you know, knight or right? Because you know, usually you people play knight in order to look for initiative, counter at counter attack, and so on, rather than just defending slightly worth end game, right? That's why uh, Ding Liren played sort of in the spirit of knight or he played with b5, and uh, he doesn't sort of like run away from uh, um, you know 
fight and he sort of like embraces it. So b5 and now a4, I think this is all theory, uh, b4 and now knight d5. And I think there was some game, uh, Giri, I'm not exactly sure uh, how this uh, game uh, followed. I'm not exactly sure how this game followed. Uh, however, uh, oh, uh, okay, in this game, well, e6 actually, uh, knight takes f6, queen takes f6, and bishop e3. So this is, uh, you know, some, this could, this is possible to play uh, with black. However, uh, I think somehow that in this position, white should be somewhat uh, uh, better. Again, uh, this pawn before it's a little bit overextended, maybe I can attack it somehow, it probably may be a5. And uh, if a5 is provoked, let's say, on some maybe queen or bishop b7, let's say, queen d2. If a5, let's say, I can play maybe bishop b5 or something like this. Uh, of course, bishop b7 is not, not the best move. Uh, there are, let's say, better moves like uh, after, bishop, let's say, bishop b7. But again, uh, maybe f3. You know, there are some, several, let's say, or maybe bishop d3 even. Uh, there are a bunch of possibilities for both sides here. And uh, in general, I believe that white should be somewhat better. However, this position is still playable. Um, instead, um, Ding Liren decided to go for something else. He played knight takes e4, which is a very, very um, risky move. It is definitely the, the critical move, but it's also very risky. Why is it risky? It is risky because uh, it simply... Um, makes another move the, uh, with the same piece in the opening. <coughs> white pieces are already better developed. White, uh, I mean, black grabs a pawn and the uh, center pawn, true, but still grabs a pawn and runs into some attack with, uh, with, for, with this knight. And uh, white can definitely uh, put some uh, pressure, uh, you know, against black king, which is still in the center. So I was thinking about alternatives to both move like e6 and knight takes e4, and I was thinking about move knight takes d5, which is um, maybe not the most, let's say, um, aggressive option, but was also not leading to some kind of like boring position. And after e takes d5 to play move g6. And the idea is to play bishop g7 short castle. And uh, I don't know, there have been no games like this so far. Uh, perhaps there could be some development in the future here. Uh, but I, I have to say I kind of like it for, for black, especially if this rook on g1 is a little bit misplaced. Like, we play rook g1 to play g4, g5 and hit the knight from f6, right? However, here, and the rook on g1 uh, doesn't really bring much. Actually, it should be better to have rook on h1 to support h4, h5 instead, right? Uh, if this was here, we would play h4, h5 to challenge pawn on g6. Uh, and the king side. With rook on g1, something like this is not uh, as uh, strong. This possibly is another, let's say, future development this opening. Um, let's say after b3, bishop g7, bishop uh, b2, I, I was analyzing something like this. Not too much, just briefly, but I didn't find any significant, let's say, issues here for black in some something like this. Uh, still, uh, white has some initiative, uh, and uh, definitely white can try moves like g4, and still position is quite dangerous for, uh, for black. And uh, perhaps, uh, you know, this, you know, perhaps white, white should look here for some ideas. Um, but, uh, you know, it's less risky, I think, still, than playing, um, you know, what uh, Ding Liren played in the game, even though it probably holds, according to my analysis. Um, so, and yes, after Bishop takes d5, and does knight f5, and just go for some crazy. Uh, you know, attacks, but it's not so clear because I may sometimes escape towards the end game with move queen c3 in at some lines. Let's say e6. I don't know, maybe I can consider playing, you know, queen takes c queen c3 uh, and trading queens at some point and trying to uh, bail out with some, you know, uh, unclear end game. Uh, it is uh, possible. Uh, so, uh, anyway, here uh, after. Um, Um, yeah, so this was uh, knight x d5. So I would like to talk about move knight x e4. If knight x e4, um, you know, this, as I, as I said, this is extremely risky for black, extremely risky, uh, but uh, it is uh, the most critical as well. 
uh, right now, I think I'm, I'm pretty much certain that this was all preparation here by uh, MVL, uh, bishop c4. And the idea is we want to play queen e2 to change this uh, knight uh, with the queen and quickly put some pressure on the e5 as well. So in the game for e6 and queen e2. Of course, right now e takes d5 is out of question because simply bishop takes d5 wins the knight. <laughs> and um, after a move like I don't know, knight c5, which is the most, let's say, logical. After a move like uh, knight f6, what has to be considered is like bishop g5, obviously. It's uh, looking uh, kind of dangerous uh, to uh, to black. Uh, so knight c5 makes sense not to go under such pin. But right now, uh, very strong move by MVL c3. So again, uh, white needs to very quickly develop some initiative uh, in order to prove compensation for the pawn. And uh, c3 is does it very, very well. Because right now, uh, you know, I just want to play stick before and keep this knight from c5. And uh, you cannot, you, you, I'm not giving black time to comfortably consolidate the position and complete the development. Because uh, if bishop b7, this is what happened in the game, I still can simply take on e7. Uh, knight take queen takes seven and six takes before, and I win the pawn back, and I get a pair of bishops, and the uh, white position is simply better, and uh, this is uh, this is simply unpleasant position for for black already, and this is again an example in a little bit different opening of course than the previous one uh, um, of uh, how to look for ideas. Um, MVL basically, I think, caught Ding Liren here in this opening, and um, he uh, managed to put some practical problems, especially you know in the rapid game. Therefore, uh, such problems are very, very, very difficult to solve. And after moves like C3, uh, you know, it's difficult to such to you know what prior preparation go play B takes C3 and allow move B4, which is after which we the knight from c5 is anyway uh, chased away and uh, it is not clear where this knight should go because knight d7 allows all kind of like knight e6 possibilities and so on uh, and knight b7 looks simply totally awful and ugly like knight b7 looks totally ugly this knight is awful here and uh, so from practical point of view uh, from human perspective it is a very difficult position to play. Still, I would like to share my discoveries here. And uh, after b4, uh, the thing is that if knight cd7, which is again the more human move, I think what's on the verge of winning with move bishop g5. Uh, if knight f6, we could, I'll talk about queen g5 in a moment. After knight f6, why can't play even long castle, which is, I found, I found when I was looking at this, I was like really, really uh, impressed by all those, let's say, files, uh, those lines. Because, but it makes sense, right? Because uh, white uh, has huge advantage in development, huge. All pieces are playing. Black has two extra pawns, but king is still at the center. And uh, the, and you know, didn't complete any. Only, only, only then from a six is playing, right? So it makes sense that uh, white should go uh, for total attack all, all the way, uh, you know, <laughs> attack with everything, and quickly move all the pieces, and even go for a long castle where seemingly king shouldn't be safe. But in reality, it doesn't matter because black has no pieces to attack even this king, uh, with um, because you know the king on c1 is, um, I mean, king on c1 is pretty safe because black doesn't have any pieces to attack it with. All of them are on the back rank. So here, I think black has more, um, white has, I mean, more than sufficient compensation for the material, and presumably even, uh, you know, nearly, nearly winning, winning chances. Uh, so after b4, I, my conclusion was that knight b7 was the only move here that you know kept the balance. But knight b7, you can just imagine, I think, how difficult, difficult such move here is. Well, I forgot to mention after knight c7, bishop g5. If queen g5, there could be concern with like knight c7. That's the problem because if king d8, uh, we simply win the queen. And uh, if uh, king e7, sorry, if king e7, <coughs> um, we can at least take the rook on a8. At least take the rook on a8. Also, there are ideas with knight takes e6 always that are extremely dangerous as well. 
so, uh, but at least we can take the rook on a8. So uh, this is also, you know, very dangerous. So knight b7, if knight b7 um, has to be played. And uh, right now I analyze several, uh, I analyze two options, either b5 or bishop b5. And in both instances, position is extremely crazy. And as I say, black is very likely okay, but uh, to prove it over the board and without prior preparation is extremely, extremely difficult. For instance, after bishop b5, uh, a takes b5, queen, uh, I mean, sorry, bishop g5, uh, queen g5, queen takes b5. And, uh, you know, here I think black, uh, white has at least a draw. Uh, with queen b6, uh, you know, and queen b5. Uh, if queen g8, of course, there is knight c7, but here probably the game will just end with a draw. Uh, because, uh, yeah, there is no, no, not much better than, than this. Uh, but you know, going for something like this with black without prior preparation and allow here such a as, as queen seven is, you know, just insane. <laughs> uh, to be honest, queen seven doesn't work because this this knight d8 and suddenly black somehow holds everything. But uh, you know, let's say knight seven king e seven and you know black holds, and uh, in the end black wins. Uh, but you know, uh, to figure out everything like this over the board in such a crazy position. Mm, un, unlikely. It, uh, unlikely something like this will uh, ever ever happen. Um, considering how complex this position is, so um, bishop b5, and uh, after bishop b5, uh, there's a takes b5, which leads to such a draw. There's also move bishop d7, which also leads to some unclear position after bishop d7, king takes d7. Uh, you know, take who will take here with queen king d7 without prior preparation. After move like queen g4, h5, queen h3, play based the best move, absolutely move, uh, absolutely the best move, g5, which is again extremely difficult to play such a move. The more, let's say, common would be to play, I don't know, play move like king e8 or something like this, and then, uh, you know, uh, try to consolidate the position, but this is way, way too, uh, too passive. Let's say I can play the knight takes e6, and after this, you know, I have moved like bishop g5, suddenly white is all the way, you know, attacking. And uh, pretty much why it should be winning here. While, uh, you know, move like g5 is totally com computer esque, right? It is not, uh, it's not easy to play such moves, especially in a rapid game. Um, but yeah, this simply works for black suddenly. And uh, according to my analysis, after, you know, bishop takes g5, queen g5, knight b6, uh, king e8, queen takes c3. Black somehow uh, holds here even rook a7, or even one white wants to uh, because there's such possibility to repeat the position. But also, black can try to play for a win move like bishop g7. Anyway, position is totally insane, and um, going too much into it, uh, look, it doesn't make much sense. I just wanted to illustrate what kind of you know crazy positions black has to consider and how much room for error is in such positions for black here, especially if white knows exactly what to do and black doesn't. Um, yeah, but you know, first of all, knight b7 is extremely, extremely difficult move to play. <coughs> That's why um, I think it was a great try by MVL uh, from practical perspective uh, to go for something like this. And here he induced immediate mistake by uh, Dingle Ren. He played with bishop e7. After knight takes e7, queen takes e7, it takes b4. Suddenly, uh, position is extremely dangerous to black. Uh, White got the pawn back, uh, has pair of bishops, and. Um, as better development as well, as better pieces. After, you know, knight d7, uh, MVL played bishop d2, and the idea right now for white is to play with long castle, bishop c3, and begin attacking on the king's side, g4, uh, g5, and so on. And uh, with such, uh, if white king goes towards the king's side, sorry, the queen's side, the white king will be safe there, uh, because there are three pawns uh, guarding it, also, those of pieces, uh, especially bishop on c3, will be very powerful. And uh, white, uh, sorry, black pieces are not developed uh, as well as uh, as as good as well as white pieces are. And in the game, uh, white is simply much better. I'm not saying black white, white is winning, but white is much better. And in the game, uh, the Ingliren, uh played all the natural moves and lost in 20, 24 moves only. Bishop b3, okay, short castle is logical. Long castle, bishop knight c6, very logical again. Knight c2. Uh, it was a very nice move actually by MVL. He doesn't trade the knights. 
why he doesn't trade because he has better pieces and those knights uh, black knights are sort of hanging uh, like it will be easier for black to play if those knights are traded uh, but uh, knight from e5 will run into some attack and it uh, makes no sense to trade the uh, you know knight takes knight takes six because first of all knight 4 is remains a threat black can play maybe e5 should be six suddenly position becomes uh, more and more unclear uh, if we play knight c2 well this knight on e5 uh, will have to go for go from there somewhere and uh, because f4 is probably loom pr probably looms uh, and again for rook b8 bishop c3 uh, knight g6 and uh, simply g3 covering you know a four square and uh, the position uh, suddenly gets worse and worse from move to move uh, i would like to note how black basically black's initiative on the king's sorry queen side is stuck this uh, pawn before is very well guarded uh, by the knight and bishop Black can open the queen side anyway. Uh, a5 will be always meant by b5, for instance. And uh, black has a very easy plan of playing h4, h5, uh, maybe f4 as well, and uh, just go for the attack on the king side. And there is not there is very, there is very little that uh, black can do about it. And the game ended five moves, which is insane. But uh, there was nothing to do after five more moves. E5, very logical move again. Try to play bishop e6. Bishop d5, uh, queen d7. Perhaps knight d8 could have been played here and uh, followed by maybe bishop e6. Uh, but okay, it's hard to criticize uh, queen 7 because knight d7 also comes with the same idea. But uh, f4 uh, right now is uh, the problem right now. Again, if f t e takes f4, she takes the four. It only helps White to basically open this rook on the G file. So the six move rook G one finally became useful <laughs> to you know to bring this rook to this G file and uh, continue the attack here um, or to develop the attack here. So White Black shouldn't be taking, but uh, so therefore Dingo Ram played Bishop B seven. But now simply Bishop B three back. We do not want to trade because even by the, for the cost of the pawn, if Black Let's say after king b1 or something played well, well, well black would have played knight d4 there will be some you know relief here uh even there is no even for a cost of the pawn because just you know um knight takes d4 bishop takes d5 simply okay for black uh, but again we do not want to trade here with, with white that's why we should be free uh in the game for just it takes the four which is pretty much desperation he should have, he should have done something else uh, i'm not exactly sure what because position is horrible either way but after this is only uh, uh, you know uh, speeds up the the process here because after queen f5 queen d2 uh, Dingebrand simply uh, resigned and I would like to note uh, I would like to note one thing here uh, the position in the which he resigned is equal in material uh, but positionally the, it was extremely difficult to play with black and uh, the game just ended very very abruptly after you know few few moves here and which were also natural moves but uh, you know it's just the difficulty of the position was uh, was too big to, to basically hand to, to handle uh, in the in the game um, against such player like MVL so this is how the game ended and again this was a very nice example of preparation of grandmaster preparation uh, by um, MVL uh, who nicely won this game uh, the last game I wanted to talk about I don't think we have time but I'll just quickly show one moment from this game which is game of Magnus Carlsen versus Daniel Dubov and this is the game in this moment the position in this moment uh, the game also ended in 25 moves that's why I wanted to bring it to you know along with the, the topic however it's not to that extent because there was no like kind of like huge uh, uh, you know opening idea that you know uh, M Dubov employed in this game uh, but um, you know, anyway, he won against Magnus in 25 moves with black pieces, which is uh, which is definitely something. Of course, Magnus made a huge mistake in this position because he played with Bishop D2, and this move is simply nearly losing, if I can put it like that. Because after Bishop D2, Bishop G4, the game is just nearly over. Instead, uh, and I, I looked at, at the game live, and the uh, chess bomb was suggesting, and I later checked with my own engine that f3 basically kills the entire attack for, from black and white has very nice positional advantage and the, you know the the game is just the game should be over maybe not over soon but definitely white is not taking any significant uh, risk here probably the, the one of the lines here is that this this 
bishop g4, perhaps it's meant by rook g3 at least, maybe there's something else as well, but at least this is, is fine for black, for white I mean. Also, if white wants to be super safe, because if I remember correctly, on also a, a draw was already insufficient for uh, Magnus to win the, the match, well, he, he could have taken, <laughs> he, take, uh, he takes e4 and the game would be uh, just, uh, you know, very clean list tearing towards, you know, equal towards equality. Uh, Magnus played bishop d2 and this was a huge mistake because after, after bishop g4, uh, suddenly he cannot play f3. Uh, okay, he did play f3 because he sort of had to, uh, because if he doesn't do it, he's gonna get himself, himself checkmated on the light square with such powerful bishop here on this world squares. I can play, you know, queen, I don't know, g4, queen h5, some of this go for this mate and the game is just over. Uh, so he had to play f3, but after bishop takes f3, queen f2, you know, rook g4, and anyway, this position of his king is totally compromised and uh, there is pretty much nothing he could do. Um, so, yeah, rook e1, rook f6, d takes e4, uh, yeah, queen h5, continuing the attack, rook e3, Bishop takes e4. There, there's pretty much nothing he could do here. Queen rook e2, and now final uh, tactical blow. Rook takes g3, because after h takes g, uh, here Magnus resigned because after rook takes g3, queen takes e2 uh, wins the game uh, with the queen, and after h takes g3, there is a checkmate of queen h1. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, all. I mean, I, I know the last game I spent like maybe a few minutes only on this uh, on this on the last one. However, I think that. All of them were extremely interesting and uh, lots of life, and um, especially the first two. Uh, they involved two. There were lots of um, interesting uh, um, positions uh, that could have arisen, and like apart from the game, uh, you know the, the lines that uh, we discussed uh, were you know were often crazy and uh, unique, and uh, and you know this is how pretty much grandmaster preparation works. We look for ideas to, where we can trick our opponent, or like um, even if the position is equal, objectively we can. Uh, we hope that uh, it will be not be easy to play for our opponent, and uh, the, that's why we can uh, look for points, uh, you know, uh, to win win the games in the future and win some points and and so on. Uh, so okay, this will be it for from me for today. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, my analysis and and the games. And uh, I will see you next time. Thank you. Have a good night.